This is Twit. We are back from the break, and I am excited to be joined by ZDNet's own Sabrina Ortiz. Welcome back to the show, Sabrina. Hi, y'all. I'm super excited to be back with yet another exciting model announcement. Yes. So Google uh, just pulled open the curtain, you know, opened the box with Gemini 3. Uh, and one of the things that we saw is that Google immediately moved to integrate it into search. I was hoping that you could kind of talk about the rollout here uh, and kind of maybe a little bit about why Google is moving so quickly to embed it in, in the consumer tools versus maybe what we see from some of the other, uh, other platforms out there. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely a first for Google to automatically put it in Google search, but to calm people's nerves who are like, no, not again. I don't really want AI in my search results. The good thing is that while they're saying it's in search, it's actually in AI mode, which yes, it's accessible from the search page. But if you've ever seen, it's an extra tab on top, kind of like when you go to images or all the different actual settings, you have to actually click on AI mode to access it. And uh, also AI mode in Gemini 3, uh, Pro in AI mode is limited to paying subscribers. So if you don't want to be uh, have AI messing with your search, this launch won't be doing so. But if you are interested, there are some perks to it, which we could get into later with the highest level things being um, that it is better at reasoning, which of course means better understanding your query and better uh, producing better results um, as a you know, resolve better understanding what you're asking. And then also the really fun part, which is like multimodality, which I'm sure you'll get into too. Yeah, so that's kind of uh, something that, that is, is touched on. It talks about how Gemini 3 can generate custom visual aids and interactive simulations in real time. So, you know, having a better explanation of quantum physics experiments. Can you talk about this multimodal approach? Because I have to say that is one thing that when I have uh, gone to AI for prompts before and thought, you know, I'd like to learn more about this subject, um, but all you can give me is text. <laughs> it's kind of a cool idea to think about these simulations, these visual aids can, yeah, tell us about that. Totally. Uh, it's always awesome, like you mentioned, being able to see not just text, but images or any type of interactive content. But now we're taking it a step further. So this model is the best, or according to Google and according to the benchmarks, it's the best at coding. So it's actually generating small little coding, small little simulations for you related to your topic. So for example, in, in what you just said, if you were looking up a physics experiment and you were like, how does this work? It might actually generate it's your own little like simulation where you could click on different things and maybe see the experiment in action and interact with it in real time, which if you're a visual learner or just somebody who needs to be uh, kind of entertained a bit more than just reading text, uh, this will be a really big learning aid for you. So uh, it's pretty cool. You should see See, you should check out a demo if you can uh, online or even try it out for yourself if you can. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one of the things that that you talk about is Google facing growing competition from OpenAI from perplexity because of those companies having AI-powered browsers. So how does Google's existing dominance particularly in search and arguably also in the browser space, I, not even arguably, like <laughs> this is the real, real deal, uh, give the company an advantage. And then is, is there a difference between Google's approach and the approach of these other companies like OpenAI, like Perplexity that are doing this AI first uh, browser experience? Oh my gosh, it's huge. You, you nailed it. Uh, like you said, Google has the dominance in the search space. So their game is going to be a lot different than, for example, OpenAI's or, or Perplexity's. Because OpenAI and Perplexity, if you're coming to their platform, you're coming because you want to experience these AI tools. If you're coming to Google's platforms, you're going because it's something that you rely on, that you use, that's part of your everyday workflow. That's in a huge advantage, right? Because again, AI overviews, how many people every day use it? Just, though, and again, those are just the summaries that come up on top of search that use AI. Use it not intentionally. It's like, oh, I'm searching something. Oh, that's there. That's cool. But it's also a disadvantage in a way because we've seen Google upset its users before because it's like, I'm used to this one thing. I don't need this AI popping up everywhere and especially if talk of AI slop. So it's like a double edged sword. They need to strike a very delicate balance, mm. which is why I think with this rollout, they specifically made uh, Gemini 
3 Pro in uh, AI mode a paid feature so that if you are an AI super user, you can access it. But again, if you're just a regular everyday user, your search experience r until now will remain mostly unchanged, which I think is a good bounds for them. Whereas like, you know, open AI or perplexity, when they launch a new feature, they could go completely bullish on it and throw it onto the main page because people are coming to them because they want the AI. So yeah, wow. Yeah, really, really uh, good analysis there. Gemini three pro uh, mm -hmm. noted that it topped the LM arena leaderboard. Mm -hmm. uh, those are impressive ben benchmark scores. That is, though, something that you could, you know, walk up to somebody and say, guess what, Gemini 3 Pro just topped the LM Arena leaderboard and <laughs> 15, like 1,501 points and you're going, I don't, is that some sort of fa uh, fantasy football thing? I have no idea. <laughs> what does it actually mean for everyday users? Like, what, what are the improvements that people should see because of it? Totally. So a couple of things there. First thing is out of the a million benchmarks that get posted every time a new model gets released, I always like to look at the actual arena leaderboard scores. And the reason for that is that those are determined by people voting. So it's crowdsourced. So people mm -hmm. are presented if like, you know, anonymously two different models, they're using it to generate uh, an answer to a prompt, and then they select the best one. I think that's truly one of the best markers, because at the end of the day, well, what you want to know how it could perform on is what you use every day. Whereas some right. of these benchmarks will be like best at PhD level computing. You're like, oh, that's great. Well, I'm never going to use that. So, <laughs> uh, I, that's why I think it's really impressive that it uh, soared all the way to the top there. And then on the, another front, uh, one thing you want to take a look at is how well it performed on reasoning benchmarks, which of course there's a bunch of them. But again, as we talked about before, reasoning is really, really important because not only does it allow it to produce a better answer, but it understands your intent better, which I think is one of the biggest frustrations people have when using AI. It's like, well, that's not what I asked. Like, if I have to refine this prompt three different times, at that point, I could have just done a Google search, found a link, and read it myself. Uh, whereas now, it could understand your intent better. So hopefully, that means that off the jump, it will just serve you with the best response in a first try. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, now, Google has gotten a lot of, of positive feedback for its nano banana uh, image stuff. And you tell us that's, that's also gotten uh, an update. It, what, what should people expect from this? Just better image generation? Is it better at a particular kind of image generation? What's, what's new now there? Yeah, so uh, Google just released its Nana Banana Pro, uh, which is built off Gemini 3 Pro. And as the title implies, there's upgrades, but the biggest ones is that now it generates text with even more improved accuracy. And I, I don't know if you remember, even like a year ago, using text, uh, using an yeah. image generator to produce text was the wild, wild west, right? You would try <laughs> to get it to answer like one word, and then it would generate different text and different, it, some things wouldn't even look like letters. Well, now I got to test this today because I was so curious as to if it was actually as good as Google claimed. It could produce not only one word accurately, it could produce sentences, even a paragraph, all right spelling, right font, consistent. And what's really impressive is that it's connected to Google search. So the information that it's pulling from for that text is actually real time world knowledge. Uh, oh, so wow. again, you could use it to create like infographics or uh, you could use it to do again, learning aids, anything memes. of that sort, which is really awesome. <laughs> yeah. Memes, use it to make <laughs> memes. Uh, so in you talk about the Gemini app also mm -hmm. getting some updates, some redesigns. Uh, there's the My Stuff folder, enhanced shopping capabilities. I think that that's one thing that Google seems to be doing quite well, which is focusing on consumer experiences mm -hmm. and not so much on being this little input output machine. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like the redesigned Gemini app speaks to that that uh, value that that Google provides? Totally. With the redesign, they were really focusing on making it a neater, cleaner, easier to use experience, which I think is the way to go because AI itself could be really overwhelming. Uh, it's it's technology we're all getting used to. We're still trying to find use cases. We're trying to find our groove. So keeping it as simple and easy to use as possible is a huge win. Also, because in the Gemini app, you could access 
a lot of these tools, for example, the Nano Banana Pro generator uh, with certain limits you could access in the app, uh, same thing with Gemini 3 Pro. So being able to cater to not only really experienced users that are possibly subscribers, but also free users who are maybe just tinkering for the first time, keeping it simple kind of makes it even across the board, I think. Absolutely. And then lastly, I just am kind of curious, it seems to be the case that anytime any of these companies come out with a new model, eventually it makes its way into the hands of, of everyday users who are not uh, paying for the subscription. Mm -hmm. Do we think that's the way that this will go as well? Or will Google kind of always as far as you can see, have a separation between the pro version being for the pro subscription and the non-pro version being for the everyday user. No, I think that the reason they're doing it the way they're doing it now is less of trying to make that division, but I think they've learned from the past that it makes sense to collect user feedback and see what the actual mm -hmm. reception is, especially from these power users who might be more open to it before giving it to all users. And even with, like, for example, the Gemini 3 Pro in AI mode, or as they were calling it, uh, Gemini 3 Pro in search, they said that soon we don't know how soon that means but it will be coming to all us users so again they they do they are planning it on bringing it to everyone i just think that the reason for their approach is just to be a bit more careful and again not to throw anybody who might not be that interested or maybe this is their first exposure to ai off if it's not just exactly perfect at launch and collect some feedback and then roll it out when it's 100 percent cooked um, thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to join us today on the show. Uh, if people would like to keep up to date with all of the work that you're doing, you are quite the prolific writer, where <laughs> should they go to do so? Totally. Well, of course, you can find my byline on ZDNet. If you want to follow me on socials, on threads, and on Instagram is probably where I'm the most active. And that's just Sabrina from extra A at the end dot Ortiz. Uh, yeah, but otherwise, follow me wherever you're, you consume your content, LinkedIn, Twitter, I'll be there. So. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. You enjoying this tiny taste of Tech News Weekly? I'm happy to hear it. You can check out the full show on our website, twit.tv slash TNW, or you can watch it right here on YouTube. Just click the link below.